YouTube, hey there, it's Casey Newman here, TaxCellAcademy.com. Thank you so much for joining me as I record this episode for the TaxCell Podcast. As always, if you enjoy podcasts, check us out, TaxCellPodcast.com. Let's go ahead and switch on over and record that audio podcast right now. Welcome to the TaxCell Podcast, where TaxCell investing is made easy. My name is Casey Dimon. I'm a TaxCell veteran. I am the leading TaxCell expert. I'm the author of the TaxCell Playbook, founder of the TaxCell Academy, and I am your host right here on the TaxCell Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. Today, I want to discuss a few hacks for improving the efficiency of your tax cell research. So hopefully I have made it no secret that your research is the difference between whether you succeed or fail in the tax cell business. It is the most crucial piece of the puzzle and it's very important that you do it accurately. The issue though is that once somebody starts researching properties, they soon realize that it actually requires quite a bit of effort and quite a bit of time. And when you're done, you might not even be all that optimistic. Maybe it's just a list of lousy properties that you think you've wasted hours researching. Or let's say you did research that list, you found a few that you wanted to invest in, you go to the auction, and you can't purchase a single property. Now that's bound to happen, but if you can learn a little efficiency in the way that you research your properties, you'll have a much easier time doing it, you'll be able to do it much more accurately, and you'll be able to research many more properties over the course of your career, which equates to a higher success rate. Now research is obviously something that I dive deep into inside the tax law academy. We actually have two entire modules on research because it's so important and it is nearly impossible to cover it in a quick podcast episode. But I do want to help you improve your efficiency. So I'll be covering 10 tips in today's episode. All right, let's get started. The first one is that I highly suggest you eliminate all distractions. Researching properties while watching TV, while browsing the internet, while listening to kids or spouses or whoever scream or whatever else you're doing besides researching properties is not going to work. This is a very serious business and you must have the discipline to treat it as such. Even if you must break up your research into smaller segments, find segments of time where you can fully focus on your tax cell research. Not only can one minor mistake derail your entire business, but you'll find it's a heck of a lot easier to efficiently research properties when you can focus. The next thing I suggest is to read the rules first. Don't just go straight into that list and begin researching properties. That's a great way to waste an hour or two in the event something in that rule does not work out for you. Instead, take a few minutes up front and read those rules. Make sure you qualify to bid. For example, if the auction is a week away and they require that you register at least two weeks in advance, there's no sense in wasting the time researching those properties. Make sure you're able also to at least attend the auction, whether it's online or in person. Make sure your schedule is clear that day or will be clear. Make sure that there isn't anything that would really impact your investment, such as the requirement to pay the current year's taxes upon purchase, which would then require you to make sure you research the tax amounts to make sure your budget will allow you to pay that stuff. Also, take into consideration, maybe there's some properties that have specific bond requirements or something similar. So make sure you read those rules. Now, odds are you'll be fine and nothing in those rules will have a huge impact on you. But there is not a single reason to waste time researching that list when all you had to do was read the rules in the first place to make sure it fits your qualifications to bid and you also fit the qualifications in order to bid. The next thing that I do is a quick scan of the tax list. Just take about 30 to 60 seconds and scroll through that list. Look at things like price. If everything is out of your budget, there's no sense researching it. What about the property information? Are all the properties in the same area or the same subdivision? These are things that you want to know. A quick scan can save you substantial time 
compared to researching every single property only to realize they're all the same thing that you don't want or you can't afford. So go through and scan the list initially. The next thing that I look at are the legal descriptions. So you can do this while you scan the list or as you research individual properties. And this is a huge hack that takes a little bit of training to fully understand, but it's something that can really save you a substantial amount of time. The most obvious thing to look for is something like the subdivision name. If you have multiple properties in one subdivision, you should first research that subdivision in its entirety prior to researching the individual properties. Oftentimes, there's a reason why multiple properties from one subdivision are on the list. Maybe you can't build on the property. Maybe the HOA fees are high or has roads that don't exist, that kind of thing. Now, beyond that, if it's something known as a measured description or a meets and bounds legal description, a quick scan will tell you if it's a three foot strip of land or something that's otherwise unbuildable or worthless. So learning to read legal descriptions is a huge time saver as you're researching tax sale properties. So take the time to learn about legal descriptions. The next one is to simply be familiar with what you're looking at. And this is one that a lot of people actually overlook. Don't start researching a tax sale list and buying based off of price alone. That's a great way to buy a dilapidated house in an area that has absolutely zero buyers. And I've seen this happen many times in economically depressed areas. Before you venture into a new area, take some time to learn about that area. Learn about the trends in that area. Learn about their laws and everything else related to your tax sale business. That way, when you spot something that doesn't quite fit what you are looking for, you will know it and then you can move on. Otherwise, if you buy off of price alone or pictures or whatever you find online without knowing about the area, you're gonna discover that you should not have purchased that property after you have purchased it, and that's something you don't wanna do. Next tip, be familiar with the various research websites you'll be using. You're gonna to wanna to spend quite a bit of time learning about the area's GIS systems about their assessor's reports, building department websites, and any other potential websites you'll be using to research properties in that area. The last thing that you want to do is realize that on the final property you are researching for the day, you found a cool section or link that would have saved you a heck of a lot of time had you known about it. So instead, browse these sites prior to researching properties in that area. Click on every button, learn what every single one does, and what everything, every code on those websites mean. It'll make the research phase go much smoother and much, much faster. The next suggestion is to create a good research flow. So when I research properties, I'll usually have every tab open that I'll be utilizing for research in that area in my browser. I'll start with the actual list, and then I'll have the assessor's report, then the GIS, then Google Maps, and whatever other sites I'm using in that area. So I'll take the parcel ID from the tax sale list, and I'll paste it into one of the search engines on whatever site, like the assessor site. Then I'll go to the GIS site. I'll have them all lined up. Then I'll go back and I will analyze that information. When I'm done analyzing all that information, I'll go through and I'll reset those different tabs. I'll clear them out and put them back to the search page. That way, when I'm researching the next property, I don't confuse that information for the previous property. We'll make stuff very, very clear. When you have a process, you will not only be able to research properties much faster, but your flow will allow you to be able to do it much more accurately as you can key in on certain aspects that you'll be looking for on every single property and you'll know exactly where they are on those websites instead of bouncing from one site to the next. So create a good research flow for yourself. And this is obviously very individualized for each person, but have that research flow is a huge help. The next suggestion is to create and use a spreadsheet for your research. Now, how you design it, it's up to you, but I highly suggest working through the list and logging at the least the properties that you're interested in and your maximum bid amounts onto a spreadsheet. 
Put that information into your workflow. Go through, analyze the properties. Maybe the last thing you do before you start the next one is input the information into your spreadsheet. That way it'll allow you to keep track of where you are, of what properties you want to invest in, how much you want to pay for those properties. And of course, then when you're finished, you simply print out that spreadsheet and take it to the auction with you. It's a very seamless process that saves time in the long run. Next one. Don't get caught in a rabbit hole. If you're researching a property and something is just extremely unclear or looks fishy, odds are that is the reason it's likely at the tax sale in the first place. It's very, very easy to see a piece of property online as you're researching it and something doesn't look just right, but you want to figure it out. And then you spend an hour or two hours trying to figure out what to offer, why this property just looks a little bit fishy, only to realize in the end, you don't even want to buy that property. So if something is off or something's unclear and you can't easily figure it out, move on to the next property. Don't waste time going down that rabbit hole of research for a property you probably won't want in the end. The next one is don't force an investment. Initially, this is easy. But after you've spent a lot of time researching a bunch of properties and you can't find one that will work for you, it might be tempting to bend your standards or maybe accept a property that you wouldn't have otherwise accepted simply because nothing else to that point would fit inside your investment objectives. What happens then is you choose that property, one of the final properties usually. You proceed to inflate the value sum. You develop the perception that it's more desirable than it truly is and you decide to spend too much money on that property. And oftentimes, this is an unconscious behavior that we make simply out of frustration that we did not find anything that was suitable for us up to that point. Don't do this. Don't allow yourself to force you into an investment. If it does not work, it simply does not work. Just keep pressing forward and move on to the next auction, move on to the next list, or on to the next property, whatever it is in your case. And finally, tip number 10, Use it as an opportunity to learn. Every single property that you research should be a learning opportunity. Instead of looking at research as a necessary evil, look at it as a huge learning opportunity. Learn about the property, about the area that it's in, what to look for in those areas, what the values are in those areas. Learn about your process, improve your research flow, refine your skills and your efficiency every single time you research a property. If you're doing it correctly and you truly are using every piece of tax sale research as a learning opportunity, then your research aspect of your business will become much more accurate and you become a much more efficient researcher moving forward. So there you have it. There are 10 tips to improve the efficiency of your tax sale research. Research is the determining factor, whether or not your investment will be successful, but it doesn't have to take forever. If you follow those tips while also refining your own personal style, your research time will be cut drastically while you become much more accurate and also allowing you to grow your business in the meantime because of your improved efficiency. Listen, I truly hope that today's episode has helped you out. If so, please do us a huge favor and leave some positive feedback for us on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on today. And as always, if we can be of any additional help, there are a whole bunch of links down below in today's show notes, including one to our primary site at taxellacademy.com. Take care, and we'll see you next time right here on the Taxell Podcast. Bye-bye.